In this video, we're going to go over some basic integration rules. So let's say if you want to integrate dx, for example, this will give you x plus some constant c. If you wish to integrate dy, this will give you y plus c. Or if you want to integrate dt, that will give you t plus c. And so this is the variable of integration. And make sure you always add that particular variable based on what you see here. Now, what if we have a constant? So let's say if we wish to integrate a constant with a variable of x. This is going to equal kx plus c. So if I want to integrate 5 dx, this is going to be 5x plus c. If I wish to integrate, let's say, 12 dy, that's going to be 12y plus c, or 4 dt, this is going to be 4t plus c. Now, another rule that you need to be familiar with is the power rule. The antiderivative of x raised to the n dx is equal to x raised to the n plus 1 divided by n plus 1 plus some constant c. So let me give you some examples of using this power rule. So let's say if we wish to find the antiderivative of x squared dx. This is going to be x raised to the 2 plus 1 divided by 2 plus 1 plus c. So it's x cubed over 3 plus c, which you could write that as 1 third x cubed plus c. So let's try some more examples using the power rule. Go ahead and find the antiderivative of x cubed, 10x to the fourth, and also let's say 1 over x squared. Go ahead and try these problems. So for this one, 3 plus 1 is 4, so it's going to be x to the fourth over 4 plus c. For the next one, 4 plus 1 is 5, so it's x to the fifth over 5. But we could simplify it. 10 divided by 5 is 2. So it's 2x to the fifth power plus c. Now what about the last one? 1 over x squared. What can we do for that example? Before you integrate it, you need to rewrite it. So we can rewrite it as x raised to the negative 2 dx, and then use the power rule. So it's x raised to the negative 2 plus 1 divided by negative 2 plus 1 plus c. And so negative 2 plus 1 is negative 1. And then we can rewrite the final answer as negative 1 over x plus c. So anytime you have a rational function, like this one, Make sure to rewrite it. So let's try another simple example. Let's say if we want to integrate 7 over x to the fourth power. Try that one. So first, let's rewrite it as 7x raised to the negative 4. And then let's use the power rule. So it's going to be negative 4 plus 1 divided by negative 4 plus 1 plus c. And negative 4 plus 1 is negative 3. So then this is equal to negative 7 divided by 3 x to the third power plus c. And that's the final answer. Now you can also use the power rule when integrating radical functions. Let's say if we want to find the antiderivative of the cube root of x. So first, you need to rewrite it. This is x to the one-third. And then use the power rule. So this is going to be x raised to the one-third plus 1 divided by one-third plus 1 plus c. So one-third plus 1. We need to get common denominators. And 1 is the same as 3 over 3. And 1 plus 3 is 4. So we can write this as x raised to the four-thirds divided by 4 over 3 plus c. Now we can multiply the top and the bottom by the reciprocal of 4 over 3, and that is 3 fourths. So on the bottom, the 3's will cancel and the 4's will cancel. So we can rewrite the final answer as 3 fourths x raised to the 4 over 3 plus c.
Now let's go over the antiderivatives of six trigonometric functions. The antiderivative of cosine x is sine x. You should write these down and commit them to memory. The antiderivative of sine x is negative cosine x. Now keep in mind, if you know the derivative, then you can know the antiderivative. The derivative of sine is cosine. The derivative of cosine is negative sine. So the derivative of negative cosine is positive sine. Now the antiderivative of secant squared, that's equal to tangent x. And the antiderivative of secant x, tangent x, dx, that's going to be secant x plus c. And the antiderivative of cosecant squared is going to be negative cotangent x plus c. And the antiderivative of cosecant x, cotangent x, that's negative cosecant x plus c. So hopefully you had a chance to write that down. And let's work on some example problems. Go ahead and integrate this function. 8 cosine x plus 3 sine x dx. So the antiderivative of cosine, we said, is sine. So this is going to be 8 times sine. And the antiderivative of sine is negative cosine. And let's not forget to add plus c. So the final answer is 8 sine x minus 3 cosine x plus c. And so if you know the formulas, it's very easy to integrate trigonometric functions that look like this. Here's another one that you could try. Find the antiderivative of 4 secant squared x minus secant x tangent x. So the antiderivative of secant squared, we know it's tangent x. And the antiderivative of secant tan is secant x. So this is the answer. It's 4 tangent x minus secant x plus the constant of integration, c. Let's work on one more example with regards to trig functions. Let's integrate cosecant x times cotangent x minus cosecant x. Now for this particular example, we need to rewrite it before we integrate it. Let's distribute cosecant to cotangent minus cosecant. So cosecant times cotangent, that's just cosecant cotangent. We still have the integration symbol. And then cosecant times cosecant is cosecant squared. Now the antiderivative of cosecant cotangent is negative cosecant x. And the antiderivative of cosecant squared is negative cotangent x. So the final answer is going to be, I'm going to reverse these two. So I have positive cotangent x and negative cosecant x. This part is positive because we have two negative signs. Now let's talk about integrating exponential functions like e to the u. It's going to be e to the u divided by u prime plus c if u is a linear function or if u prime is a constant. If u prime is not a constant, this will not work. So let's work on some examples. Let's say if we want to integrate e to the 4x. It's going to be the same thing, e to the 4x, divided by the derivative of 4x, which is 4. Because this is a constant, this will be the right answer. Now let's say if we want to integrate e to the 7x minus 3. Let's not forget dx. So it's going to be the same thing, e to the 7x minus 3. And the derivative of 7x minus 3 is a constant, like 7. And so that's going to be the answer. Now let's say if we want to integrate e to the x. It's going to be the same thing divided by the derivative of x, which is 1. So it's simply e to the x plus some constant c. Now this one won't work. We can't say it's e to the x squared divided by 2x. This is not a constant. So in this situation, this will not be the answer. 
If you try to find the derivative of this expression, it will not give you e to the x squared. Now let's move on to logarithmic functions. The antiderivative of 1 over u du is going to be the natural log of u divided by u prime. And the same is true. u has to be a linear function and u prime must be a constant. If it's a variable, it won't work. So let's say if we want to find the antiderivative of 1 over x. It's going to be ln x divided by the derivative of x, which is 1 plus c. So let's say if we want to integrate 1 over x plus 5. It's going to be the natural log of x plus 5, and the derivative of x plus 5 is 1. And so it's just ln x plus 5 plus c. Now, try this one. What's the antiderivative of 1 over 4x minus 3? So it's going to be the natural log of 4x minus 3, and the derivative of 4x minus 3 is 4. Now, let's confirm the answer. Let's find the derivative of this expression. So if we were to differentiate 1 fourth natural log 4x minus 3, will we get the original answer? The original problem, I mean. To differentiate the natural log of u, it's equal to u prime over u. So in this case, u is 4x minus 3, and u prime is 4. So this is going to be 1 fourth, and then u prime over u, so 4 over 4x minus 3. And the derivative of a constant is going to be 0. So in this case, the 4s will cancel. And so this will give us the original problem, 1 over 4x minus 3. And so it works. Let's try one more example. What is the antiderivative of 7 over 3x minus 8 times dx? So what I'm going to do is move the constant 7 to the front and then apply the same process in the last problem. So u is going to be 3x minus 8. So then this is going to be 7 times ln of u or ln of 3x minus 8 divided by the derivative of 3x minus 8 which is 3 plus c. So the final answer is going to be 7 over 3 natural log 3x minus 8 plus c. So that's it. And let's confirm it with differentiation. So let's find the derivative of this expression. So it's going to be 7 thirds times the derivative of ln 3x minus 8. And the derivative of c is 0. So in this case, once again, we need to apply this formula. The derivative of ln u is u prime over u. So we can see u is the stuff inside of the natural log function, so that's 3x minus 8, which means u prime is 3. So it's going to be 7 over 3 times u prime over u, 3 over 3x minus 8, plus 0. And we can see that the 3s will cancel, giving us the original problem of 7 over 3x minus 8. And so that's how you can confirm it.